Ah, what do you see? We're on the marsh of the beautiful St. John's River. And this is natural Florida. A few hardwoods, some pines, and the familiar and popular cabbage palm. Now, that'll be the theme and the focus of today's Designer's Landscape. Now, one thing the homeowner did stress to me is they want their house to feel like it's lowered into a natural setting here. That's why we're talking about the cabbage palm or the sable palm. We'll use that term interchangeably and maybe describe why or how they came to be of the cabbage palm. But you look back here, I see smaller palms that have volunteered and come up from seed and the marsh grass. Those two elements are going to be key to making this look like it fits into this picture. Also, something else to consider. When I look upon the landscape here, the natural setting at the riverbank, I see cabbage palms wide open, but in different staggered heights. They're not all the same height or tier. So we want to stagger those heights, tall, medium, and small, step and tear us down, and try to replicate this the best we can. Now, I've come up with a little landscape plan for how we'll place the palms around the house. Let's take a look. Let's bring you in close and take a look at our game plan for today. Now you might look at this and initially say, look at all the cabbage palms. Well, that's true. We've got 38 to 40 going in all together, but our goal is to create a theme. Instead of one palm over here and one over there that we see so much, we do groupings, we do clusters. And we're standing right here at the back porch, which is in open here to the walkway going down into the backyard. So a nice grouping here, both up inside the wall that's about three foot tall and down on the bottom. As I bring you over to this corner, we want to do the same thing by creating a stack, 15 foot height, 12 foot, 10 foot, and then tearing down inside the box with a 10 and an eight foot. So we create a nice feeling there of tall, medium, and small. I'll bring you up around because of the homeowner wants to keep their window views open, both left and right side. Well, that's why we place a cabbage palm right here where the corner turns. There are no windows. Outdoors, it leaves us a great impression and it doesn't block the view. We've created a little atmosphere here with two palms outside the master suite area. And then coming down where the laundry room is, we've got three windows here. So I wanna be able to show the palms and maybe light them so they'll have an impression daytime and nighttime as well. Well, the concern was not to block, but enhance the front door. So we've done that, tall, medium, and small, a 12, 10, and eight, all the way in the front, and then creating a few other little clusters as you enter the driveway area. Well, it's time to install some palm trees. Okay, sometimes people use bobcats, uh, front end loaders, whatever. We've got a forklift here, which works pretty good. Uh, no doubt about it. I've got a little six foot strap. So, and we use a choke on this. Those of you who have moved trees before know exactly what I'm talking about. This is about an eight footer. And so a simple choke tie like that and he'll sit there good. Eric is our operator doing a great job. Because we get it to the hole, we may have to move it around a little bit. Try to show him where to go. Keep your fingers out of the way as you slide it down and give them the signal to lift up. If you come in a little closer, you can see they wrap these to try to keep a little bit of moisture in. Again, this is our existing root ball. and Basically, we can peel off any of this top, but all of these roots here will die. Until they flush out with a new source of roots, uh, that's our sign that this tree is gonna be okay. But everything needed for this tree to survive nutrients water is in the trunk and so we've tried to chose some some big fat ones so they look really nice eric let's move it to the hole and we'll set this one right in the front door by the front step here
trying to get him between the forks. Good. And up he goes. So I'm not worried too much about bare rooting these. But this is our this is our depth. Now you can plant a palm tree this deep or even deeper, a cabbage palm like this. That's a pretty small root system. Most of them had bigger ones, but TLC is going to make it survivable. We've done what we call a stack. Tall, medium, small. Tall, medium, small here at the entrance. Actually, this hole is too big just because that root system is so small. So I'm gonna backfill a little bit. Let's set him and see how he does. Another thing, you wanna stand clear of the load. See the way that tree is leaning? You don't want to be over there in case that snaps, it's going to fall right on the cameraman. No, he's got a pretty good hold of it. He tries to find the center for it, for us. He comes off of it. Give us a little bit of fork here. Good. And back up in that way. where it's harder to kind of straighten it. Good. Lift it up a little bit. Okay, that's great. Let's fill her in. So you see our match up there. Not too bad. Tall, medium, and a smaller one here in the front. Okay, so we've got quite a few more trees to install, but uh, what we'll do is we dry pack him with our feet when we get enough dirt around him to let him go, get the operator out of there, move on to the next one.
Uh, now we're going to show you the results of the hard work. The trunks are all carved and shaped and look beautiful. And uh, up here, you can tell what's going in this little pad. It's going to be a little chipping green for the homeowner to knock balls out into the wild. That's kind of fun. Anyway, the other thing I wanted to bring up to you with the trees in the back and the front, you may have noticed how we've given them a hurricane cut. So the guys that go out, they dig these in the wild, in the woods basically, but they clean the trunks, uh, trim off some of the boots, if you will, but give them what's called a hurricane cut. You see, uh, plants, in this case trees too, dry out or desiccate through their foliage. So to preserve the life of the tree, we cut out that process, trim it back. That's why when you transplant something, you cut the roots, well, you need to tip back the foliage as well to compensate for that. That means they'll shock better and the, the chances of them making it will be better too. Even though, as a general rule, in the palm family, you probably lose about 20 to maybe 30% of what goes in the ground or what's planted. So we'll have to see how that works out. Anyway, looking better. Well, we mentioned two little cabbage palms right here off the master. Lighting them at night will bring some ambiance and atmosphere. You look at the ones in the background too. The stacking, the stair heighten. Okay, um, one thing I've noticed about the palms is they look the best when they've been pruned in the field because they take sharp uh, shovels or machetes and clean the trunks of them and deboot some of them. These are boots that are left on and they're I mean, they're solidly affixed, but it exposes the nice uh, yellow or color of the, of the trunk nice and fresh. Now, with time, the sun will fade that and it'll be just like a fence, cypress fence that'll fade to a kind of a gray color. But again, off of the uh, laundry room here and master bath, we've got some outdoor night highlight with lighting on the canopies as they develop. I guess there's one thing we should also mention. All palm trees are not created equal. Some nice, straight and full, others thin. We asked for wide, fat ones here, but you notice the bow that some of these have. So there's only so much we can do with that. We can push him a little bit, but it's got that natural bow character. And that's fine because it does show a little character. Now, another thing we're gonna be looking for, if you examine the top, that little bud, that tip, that new growth, ah, that's a good sign. That means we're on the road to good growth. It is amazing. The hard work is starting to pay off already. I love what these do for the entrance to this house. Not too much canopy, doesn't hide it, it enhances it. Tall, medium, small. Now, we showed you that we dry pack these. Some people would pack them with water and if uh, they had different equipment, but we, we wanted to keep moving. So, we created a jet stick, it's basically, uh, Schedule 40, three quarter PVC with a hose adapter and a shutoff valve to jet down and find any cavities. You're gonna get cavities of air and so we wanna fill them in, wash them in all around the root ball so they get settled in. Now while jetting is not necessary for smaller plants, you can pack them by hand. Any large specimen is gonna have air pockets created. So jetting and putting a softer soil in those cavities is gonna just do better for the life of the tree or plant. Now, I've been referring to the sable palmetto as a cabbage palm throughout the series here. Why is it called a cabbage palm? So, sable palmetto is the South Carolina state tree and the Florida state palm. And um, what's interesting about these is that the native Indians used to harvest this vegetable and you look inside the, the head of that, the apical meristem, is where the heart of that tree resides. And so it looks like a cabbage, so to speak. Some people shred it and make slaw out of it, or there's five different other type of palms that are used for heart of palm to harvest that as a vegetable. Very tasty. Now again, the native Indians used to come in, take, peel that head back, and harvest the cabbage. Well, it's called heart of palm also for another reason that destroys the life of that tree. It is actually the heart of the palm. So by sacrificing that uh, for a salad or a vegetable, 
it also sacrifices the life of the entire tree. When it comes to fertilizer, what will we use on the palm trees? Well, we've come up with a palm and ornamental blend. Uh, most fertilizer companies have a blend that's originated or oriented to palm trees. And what's nice about it is it has high iron, high magnesium, and manganese, which really provides a wonderful green up process for the plant tissue. I recommend it for lawns, for ornamentals, for fruit trees, even vegetables, everything. You don't need three to five types of fertilizers for every, all, every plant variety you have around your house. Get a good all-purpose palm tree fertilizer and use it for everything. The time just goes by so quick. So, since we've got plenty more work to do here, we'll have to invite you back next time. We'll be laying curvilinear bed lines with our St. Augustine Classic Sod, installing colorful plants to enhance the front and backyard patio areas. Even the little patio off the side, what can we come up with by keeping our natural grass theme along with adding some color and low maintenance plants? So just what type of plant varieties will we use for the palm trees in the project here? Well, we'll have to invite you back and show you. For the designer's landscape, I'm Gary Allen. I'll see you soon. <laughs>